Good morning and welcome to Radio Friends on this Tuesday, January the 21st. It's good to be with you today. We've got two topics. We're going to talk, first of all, about insurance matters. And many of us don't don't like to think about insurance, especially long-term insurance. And then Scott Gordon from the uh, Food Bank for Central and Northeast Missouri is here. And he's got some statistics that are just going to kind of blow your mind away with how much food they took in last year and how much food they gave away to people. But let's start, first of all, with Jackie O'Brien. Welcome to Radio Friends, Jackie. Thank you. And we were talking, before we went on, about long-term care insurance. And yes. this is something that I think a lot of people really don't like to think about. I don't. Of I just kind of put it out of my mind <laughs> because you think something like this with long-term care is not going to happen to you. Of course. But explain, I want you to explain to our listeners what happens if you need long-term care. Medicaid will pay for it, right? Medicaid is the only program that will pay for it. They will pay for all of your long-term insurance needs. But, and there's a great big but <laughs> big right but. there. But you can't have any other assets. You can have a house, you can have a car, you can't have more than $1,000 in any other assets. So anything you've worked for your whole life to earn, to pass on to your kids, or you know, say it's long-term care because you broke your hip or both legs and you just need care for six or nine months while you recuperate, that can decimate a large portion of your savings. Medicare will pay for it, but before they will pay for it, you have to spend down everything that you have. Your savings accounts, your... Investments. And you can anything. have $1,000 left, and then they will kick in and pay for it. Mm -hmm. Is there any... Medicaid. Medicaid yes. will kick in and pay for it. But you can keep the house, and you can keep the car. As long as there's a spouse at home that needs it. If, if you're just a single person and that's it for you, you may, there's a chance that you could also lose the house. Now, can the, the spouse car. not keep half of what you have there as a are, married couple? There are a couple different variations. There's different thresholds for different income bands. And that's one great thing about long-term care insurance is that it varies so much case by case that if, there, if the wife has never worked and everything's technically in the husband's name, there can be a shift of assets so then not everything is lost. But long-term care insurance is the primary way to protect your assets in the event that one or both spouses needs long-term care. Okay, so how does one go about, they can talk to any insurance agent, correct? Just about, I believe so. Um, I know any, I don't know if like car insurance, if it's just a company that does car insurance, okay, they probably but, don't. Right. But if they do but life insurance. Do life insurance, mm -hmm. you can talk to, to your insurance agent and, yes. and tell them that you are interested in long-term care insurance. Exactly. Is there a, is there a big difference in, um, in prices of long-term care insurance or is it pretty much one fits all? Uh, no, it varies greatly depending on the type of coverage you want. If you want only nursing home coverage or if you want only home coverage, you know, whatever situation you think will fit you will work. And it depends on how much, how long you think you'll need it. Some okay. people think they'll only need it for two years. Some will want it for oh, five so years. so you can buy it for so, two years or five years. You can buy it for the how, rest of your life. However long you anticipate needing okay. it. Okay. But in your 40s and 50s is the prime time to start planning that. Okay. The, the younger you are, the cheaper it is to buy. So if you want more information, just check with your insurance agent, whoever he or she may be, and they can give you all the details. Or if you want to talk to uh, Jackie O'Brien in person, uh, your number is 573-673-19. 14. That is correct. Okay. Jackie, Great. thank you so much for coming by. Thank you uh, very that's much. That's something I hadn't, 
I haven't given a whole lot of thought to it. I'm getting to be an old geezer. Nobody likes to think about it. <laughs> right. All right, Jackie, thank you for thank coming you. by. Happy New Year. Thank you. Scott Gordon is with us today from the Food Bank for Central and Northeast Missouri. Good to have you here, Good Scott. Good to have you here. One, one geezer to another. Yeah, well, I, I think I'm a little bit more of an older geezer I than don't you think are. So. But uh, you were telling me before we came on, you set records last year, didn't we you? We set records last year in, a, in several categories at the Food Bank for Central and Northeast Missouri. The big one, and the one we really want to send a shout out to everybody to say thanks for, is the our, our pounds delivered mark, uh, 36 million 62,632 pounds of food were distributed by the food bank to our 32 county region. 36 million, over 36 million pounds of food. That's right. Visualize for me, if you will, the, the, the earth. If we set the cans of food around the equator, twice around the equator. That's put, how much food you gave put out. Put your mind around that. That's how much food you gave out. Exactly. And, and that's, uh, it's due in large part to the great giving people that we have here in, our, in central and northeast Missouri. The, the, the best people in the world live here, and they, people give and give and give and give, and they keep on giving, and we're glad because there's a big, big need mm -hmm. for the emergency food. Another thing that'll, that'll blow you over, we had a, the equivalent of 40% of Columbia's population volunteer at the food bank last year. We had 44,764 people who volunteered at least two hours. The equivalent of 40% 40, 40 of yes. the city of Columbia. Right, figuring 110,000 for, for Columbia. Maybe more than that, but that was the metric we used. Yeah, and, and, and obviously part of these people did not live in the right, city of Columbia. Right, and they did But just, just for a comparison, we thought that was interesting, you know, yeah. that, uh, that four of ten people volunteered, basically. We have one more that I want to talk about, and that's the volunteer hours, the hours that these people contributed. Phenomenal, giving, giving people. Nine, uh, 104,925 hours. That's the equivalent of 52 people working full-time for a year. Mm. So you, if you put a salary to that, if you put if a you put salary a, to that, even at minimum wage, you know, you do the math. Yeah, it's a lot. It, that's it's a lot of money. That's a lot of People money. are wonderful, and we we thank you if you helped with food, if you helped with with volunteering, or if you just advocated for the food bank. Uh, and I know you do. Thank you so much for everything for a, a wonderful 2013. Real quick, we got about 30 seconds. Kids helping kids. Kids day. helping kids day is coming up Saturday, March the 8th. Uh, we have sessions for kids 4 to 10 to come and volunteer with a parent or a guardian. It really gives them an insight about uh, doing things for others. And, and where is that going to be? At the Food Bank, Saturday, March the 8th. We're taking registrations now. Go to our, our website or call the Food Bank, 474-1020. Okay. 474-1020. Yes. Scott Gordon, thank you so much for coming by. Always a pleasure. And again, Happy New Year to you. Tomorrow, you. Uh, Dave Mars will be on telling us how we can um, save money around the house by being efficient. Our program directed by Travis McMillan of the Reynolds Journalism Institute. Audio is Kyle Felling, KBIA. Our floor director, Sifan Oyoung. And our assistant producer and guest coordinator, Uncle James Mauser. And if uh, something you'd like to hear or see, drop me an email, pepperpmissouri.edu. We'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for listening. Bye.